Welcome, I'm Jeremy Jones, um, and today we're going to talk about um, some of the automation tools we've developed here in the lab. Uh, while the entire ITI development staff has put in a lot of work to develop these tools, um, myself, Tim Yardley, Dennis Coline, and Prosper Penapabi have done a lot of work to get this particular demonstration working. Now, automation and usability are key to the success of the lab. What we're trying to do is provide a broad set of real simulated and emulated hardware and software into a unified environment to provide an intuitive description for experimenters to, to use to automatically configure their experiments and obtain data from their experiments. We want to provide the opportunity for the experimenters to repeat their uh, experiments as well as to take advantage of federation so that we can use resources at test beds other than ours. Um, there are a few solutions that are out there. There are research oriented computational infrastructure and commercial and open source uh, computational systems as well as systems that provide uh, networking and federation um, and all of these are built for a particular purpose but it's not our purpose. Um, none of these systems combine everything. So we've decided to build on DETER using it as a framework. DETER is a cyber experimentation framework that allows you to configure hosts with custom software and instrumentation. Um, it will configure your network topology and network parameters such as bandwidth and delay and it allows you to change provisioning mechanisms um, to emulate network links or even use real network links or external networking sources such as Genie. Essentially, DETER makes building network systems easier, especially in the early experiment development stages. Now, we use it as a framework um, for rapid configuration of experiments using the built-in virtualization and federation capabilities. Um, but only on the cyber side. Now we've added uh, cyber physical pr provisioning support, which automates the usability of our lab, makes the deployment of experiments easier for our researchers so that they're sort of define and click. But we've built our tools in a general way so that they can be used with other frameworks as well as standalone. Now what you see here is an example of the type of experiment that we perform here in the lab. These experiments include real physical hardware, simulated hardware, and real and simulated software systems. So now we're going to take a look at the provisioning workflow. An experimenter will dis define their experiment and that, that experiment definition is sent to a parser. The parser will review the experiment and ensure, ensure that the experimenter isn't asking for resources that don't exist. After that, the experimenter will start to swap in process, which initiates provisioning. Now, the cyber provisioning will reboot computers, install operating systems, and set up the networking parameters. And once those machines are all up and running, a second stage process will start, which starts services and sets up instrumentation. Now, what we've done is um, made modifications to the cyber provisioning process as well as added a physical provisioning step. And then of course we've created new services and instrumentation that can be used in this second stage. Now we'll take a closer look at the actual work that we've done. We've built a deter cluster. Our deter cluster is in the back of the room um, and has six nodes. Each node has 24 effective processors with 24 gigs of RAM, which using, using the built-in virtualization gives us 144 usable computers. Now we've extended that virtualization system to add multiple operating systems. Originally, the system was limited to a single virtual machine image for the entire experiment. We've added the capability to use multiple images <laughs> multiple images for an experiment. We've also added specialized equipment provisioning such as for the SEL relays and RTDS. Um, in addition, we've uh, integrated hooks into DETER to um, 
We've integrated Hooks into Deter to use various domain-specific software such as OpenPDC, RTDMS, which you actually see running here, um, as well as PDC Simulator, which you can see running down here. Um, we've demonstrated a federated cyber-physical experiment with our DEFT partners, PS, PNNL and ISI. Um, and that, that experiment includes high-fidelity, low-scale simulation from our RTDS, low-scale, low-fidelity, high-scale simulation, such as from PDC Simulator, as well as real physical hardware like the SEL421 relay. And we're exploring more options and interconnection possibilities for the future. Now we'll take a look at the, the work we've done in the cyber and physical provisioning stages. Um, we've automated the configuration of SEL relays. Um, our automation system understands the SEL configuration syntax. But these, these configuration tools are written in a uh, modular and abstract way so that we can use them with more than just the SEL hardware. We've added the capability to provision PMUs into an, a running OpenPDC instance, including adding it to the OpenPDC output stream so that when the experimenter is notified that their experiment is running, they'll be able to immediately collect data from OpenPDC. <clears throat> and here we're going to look at a video of um, the provisioning process. Now this is a sped up video um, because the provisioning process can take up to 20 minutes. Um, so here you see that the system is provisioning the um, computers and network that is part of the experiment. Um, and here in just a moment the uh, system will start provisioning uh, SEL421 relays into the experiment. And here, in a moment, you'll see this highlight. The system is actually adding the PMUs to the OpenPDC instance. Now there's four relays that are part of this particular experiment, so it will continue on for a moment while it provisions the additional relays, including adding those relays to the um, OpenPDC instance. And now this is done and the experimenter is being notified that their experiment is up and running and ready. So now we'll um, look at some of the second stage tools that we've developed. Um, we've developed a tool called RSCAD Streamer. RSCAD Streamer is an interaction engine for the RTDS. Um, Tim is going to execute um, a command within the experiment, within the running experiment, that is actually interacting with the GUI interface here. Now normally, an experimenter would actually have to have this GUI running on their own machine and actually move their mouse up and click on those buttons and make that switch flip, but we're able to do that from within, programmatically from within the experiment. Now RSCAD Streamer is a plugin based system that allows the experimenter to create um, a plugin that interacts with RTDS and performs any actions that they, they need for their particular experiment. Um, we've also integrated some dom domain specific hardware such as PDC, PDC simulator which can be deployed into an experiment using virtualization. We're also able to output data to um, through the, the experimental network to RTDMS for visualization. Now what we're going to show here is a scaled down version of a presentation that we'll be giving for at IEEE HST. And what this demonstration shows is we have, we're visualizing all of our data using phase zero RTMS and this, this data is coming from an OpenPDC instance. Now OpenPDC is getting its data from a real physical PMU from eight virtual PMUs that are running inside our RTDMS, um, as well as several instances of the PD PDC simulator that's running here. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a short circuit fault on bus nine of a WEC nine bus model that's running on the RTDS. And here you see that programmatically we've executed this fault. Um, 
now all of this data is flowing through the experimental network and then shows up here on phaser RTDMS as a voltage drop that you see here and then of course it returns back to steady state. In conclusion, we have fully provisioned research using these tools, um, but not just this demonstration, there are other, several other projects within the lab that are using these tools as well. In the future, we plan to add new PMU visualization analysis and research capabilities, as well ex as expand the domain-specific software and hardware that we can provision using DETER. The important thing is, is that this is a major step toward our goal of a practical smart grid with automatic provisioning of cyber, physical, and simulated systems. Thank you.